Hey, I am back with a quick video about my favorite commuting cycling jacket. And I was asked about this in the comments of a couple of other videos that I did. And that's a pretty easy answer. I love this jacket. This is not sponsored or anything by Showers Pass, but this is the Showers Pass Women's Atlas jacket. And it caught my eye out of all of the other cycling jackets out there because of this really cool pattern. This is maps of different bike-friendly cities from Portland to Paris and a bunch of other ones. And it's reflective, so it lights right up. When the light is off, let me see, I might be able to, might be able to show you if I turn this ring light off. Yeah, so you can see it's very subtle. It's not normally glowing like that. So day to day, when I'm like walking in the building, I'm not, um, coming into work wearing this like, hello, like neon orange monstrosity. So I like how adaptable it is. It's definitely high vis. I think a really beautiful pattern and also subtle. So I really liked that about it. That was definitely what like drew me to it in the first place. I've had this jacket for about four years and I think that really speaks to the quality and longevity of it. And I think this is just one of those things that the saying, when you buy quality, you cry once. I think that applies because these jackets are not cheap. Showers Pass jackets go $200 and up, I think. This is the only Showers Pass jacket I have. If it rained more here, I would probably go for a rain jacket. I picked up like a regular old rain shell at REI, nothing special. And that has worked really well for me for rain. And so I will say that Showers Pass makes really great rain gear. This is not a rain jacket. It's rain resistant. I, I wear it in the fog or the drizzle maybe, but it has seams that are not reinforced waterproof. And at least this version of the jacket that I will link, this version is not supposed to be a rain jacket. It's supposed to be like a winter jacket. This is also not the jacket that they have that's like super insulated, but they do have that option. So if you do not live in South Carolina, you will probably want that one. If you live in the Midwest or up North, you'd probably want more warmth. I only have one like really cold month, January here, where I might bike to work in like 20 degrees and then bike home in like 40 degrees. And that would be, that's like the coldest part of the year that lasts like a few weeks out of January. And then we have like random days, like the other day, it's November and it was 70 degrees yesterday. But in the morning, it is usually pretty cold from October, November up until March, it'll be like 40 degrees in the morning. And this is what I wear. If I need more warmth, I typically just layer on underneath it. So I don't, um, I have like a puffy jacket. If I'm feeling like really cold, um, or just really want more insulation, I might wear a puffy instead of this, but day to day, I mostly wear this jacket and it's holding up really, really well. Popping in during editing because I realized I forgot to mention a very important part of all of this calculation with how cold I'm gonna be is the fact that I personally have a 20 minute commute where I'm just going, generating a lot of heat. If for example, you had to stop and wait for a bus in the middle of your commute, just keep in mind that as your heart rate drops, you're going to get very cold. If you were standing waiting for your kid to get the bus before you're biking, you're gonna get cold. But as long as you're moving, you're gonna get really warm. And so that's why I prefer layers to having like a really, really warm coat. And that's why this jacket works really well for me because it's great in 50 to 60 degrees and I can make it work for colder and colder and colder by adding on layers, a vest, Scarf and gloves we're gonna get to in another video because my hands get super cold. But focusing on jackets, wanted to mention that. Okay, back to the video. So I will go over some of the features. I have gloves and stuff in my pocket from my commute home today. And they have this inside pocket, which comes in really handy. I like to put like my wallet or, this is gross, my Invisalign in there. <laughs> and um, I have, you know, these regular side pockets that zip up, which is very important because when I'm riding, I don't want like my gloves or whatever I've stashed in there, my AirPods, whatever to fall out. That's not the only pocket. I forget that this one is here. On the inside, 
there's also this like top pocket. Um, and I will say the seams feel like super strong and reinforced. I haven't had any pockets break. I also have this pocket over here. I obviously don't use those very much. I'm one of those people who will forget that something is in their pockets if they have a jacket with a whole lot. So I feel like that is definitely plenty more than I even use, but it could come in handy for sure to have inside pockets, especially if you're in a city, you have to worry about security. It's always good to have inside pockets. On the wrists, I don't use this feature either, but if you had smaller wrists, then you could pull this tab and I can just get it on the smaller setting. That's pretty tight. That would come in handy if it was raining and I was trying to keep the water out. But as I said, it is not a rain jacket. If it's, if I'm riding in the pouring rain, it'll resist the water, but around the seams later when I, when I take it off, I will have like wet shoulders, like right on where that seam is. So on the other hand, it's like warm, but breathable. And what you don't get with a totally waterproof jacket is you lose breathability unless you have a very expensive jacket that somehow manages to do both with like really fancy technology. I don't have one of those to review for you. So that's what I kind of like read and reviews though, is that it's really hard to have breathability and waterproof features on a jacket just because of the materials and construction. I don't mind that this jacket is not waterproof because if it is raining, I can throw on a poncho over top of this. I have a really short commute. So this works best for me day to day. That's gonna totally depend on your climate and your preferences and all of that. So again, as per usual, I'm just speaking to what I like and you have to make your own decision based on your commute. This does have a hood. It is not detachable and I rarely use a hood. It's nice to have. And I like that it is like a drawstring retractable. <laughs> if I needed to really like squeeze this down under my helmet, it's reasonably thin. And as long as your helmet isn't super fitted, you could fit a helmet on top of this hood. I guess if I had like my perfect dream coat, I think I would have like a zipper detachable hood because day to day, I just don't really like things with hoods. That's just my preference. I just like a collar, but not a big deal. Obviously not a deal breaker because I still like this jacket. One other thing that if I'm gonna have a hood, I would love for it to have a, like a visor or a bill because I usually wear a hat when it's raining under my helmet. Maybe that's why I don't really use a hood as much because it's hard to do a hat and a hood. It would be really, really cool if a jacket had a zipper right here and like you could like fold out like a little bill or something, kind of like they have on the Clever Hood poncho. I really love the feature of that poncho where it's just enough of a of a brim on the, well, the brim of the cape or the hood um, to block out like the rain because when you have rain in your face, it's just really helpful to have that little visor, that, that brim there. So trying to think of things that I would change. There's two, removable hood and a, a brim. That would be, I guess, on my wish list. So I am wearing the women's small and this jacket, the material says 100% polyester. Popping in again because I forgot to say this is washable. It's machine wash cold and hang to dry. I avoid washing at all possible. It stays pretty clean on its own because the material has that kind of repellent quality. And I try to avoid washing my gear to make it last longer. So there's that. Okay, back to the video. You definitely feel a difference between the outside, which is kind of this like swishy, again, water repellent material to the inside, which feels very different. It's not the like super fuzzy winter lined version of the jacket, but it has this kind of, again, polyester. It's like a fuzzy textured fleece feeling almost. And I, what I really like about this is that I can wear this jacket in 50 degrees and not roast, um, especially maybe I might come in with like a short sleeve shirt or something on and I just need this jacket in the morning. And then by the afternoon, maybe it's warm and I don't need it. Or vice versa in the winter, I'm almost always bundling up more in the morning and then it's much warmer or less cold in the afternoon depending on the time of year and all of that. So this jacket bundles down pretty small and I can fit it in my pannier. 
So I really like that it's not like super bulky or anything like that. Sometimes I think I said I use a puffy and those pack down really small too. So I'm a big fan of use what you have. Don't feel like you need to go out and buy a fancy jacket. But if you are, these are maybe some features to look for and some things that might help. So that is basically what I can think of about the Showers Pass jacket. Again, it definitely depends on what you need, what you're looking for. But the selling point for me was definitely this beautiful design. And I think that the quality has been really great. I think I'm gonna have this jacket for years and years. So for me, it was a worthwhile investment. I asked for it for Christmas, so I didn't have to pay for it. But honestly, I would. I reached out to Showers Pass and they were kind enough to give me a referral link. I wanted to do this video totally on my own, but as long as I was doing the video, if you decide that you want a Showers Pass jacket and you use my link, then a portion of the sale will go to um, nonprofits that I volunteer with. And I just think that that's really cool. Um, I guess one last thing I wanna say about Showers Pass is that they are a really cool company. I know that a ton of people recommend their products. That's how I learned about them. And they seem to have great customer service. I haven't had to contact customer service myself, but in kind of looking up a little bit more about them when I was doing this video, I saw that they do a lot in the cycling community to bring more people into cycling and make commuting better. So I really appreciate that about cycling companies. Um, when I see them giving back, that's really cool. And I really appreciate that they gave me a promo code. So thank you, Showers Pass. And again, that is for local nonprofits, not for me. So if you decide to support them, thank you so much. And if you have any questions or things I did not cover about this video, please let me know in the comments and I will definitely be glad to answer those.